So in this video, I'm going to talk about band gap references. Uh, well, first of all, what is a band gap references and a band gap reference, and why do we need them? Um, well, for a lot of circuit applications, we want some circuit, so some black box uh, that at its output produces a voltage that's constant, say one volt. And we need this for a lot of different things. We need it for uh, biasing. We need it for biasing op amps. We need it for biasing current sources. Uh, we need it for doing things like making reliable ADCs or DACs. Um, uh, or DACs. And so we, we need this circuit that can produce a constant voltage. But the problem is that uh, when we, we know that when we apply a temperature, so we, when we start to heat this circuit up, in general, this voltage is going to change. So if we increase the temperature, say, by 30 degrees Celsius, this voltage might now be 1.05 volts. And if we needed precise control over that voltage for some sensing application, for example, that's not going to work. This circuit is not going to work. So we need a circuit that's independent of temperature. In other words, we want to generate a voltage that is not a function of temperature. We want to generate a voltage that is constant when you heat up and cool down the device. And you might say, well, Jordan, good chance, do it. Good, good luck doing that, because uh, we know that the voltage um, as a function of temperature for any device, um, it might do something crazy. So if, I don't know, the temperature is like zero degrees or zero Kelvin, it might look like this, and then it might, the, the voltage, uh, in general, in any quantity for semiconductor devices is going to be some wild function of temperature. It's got probably an e to the minus one over kT in it. It's got maybe a t to the three halves, maybe a one plus the square root of t. Uh, it might have some really nasty dependencies in it. But if we're only interested in a certain range of temperatures, so say we're only interested in uh, we're only interested in temperatures about say 300 Kelvin. 300 Kelvin. So maybe we're only interested in temperatures from here to here. Then we can use temperature coefficients, or we can say, in general, I know that the temperature dependence of this circuit is probably gross, but about some fixed temperature, say 300 degrees Kelvin, uh, the voltage might look something like this. It might just be some V naught, so some V naught plus some coefficient times a change in the temperature. In other words, we're taking a, we're linearizing the temperature variation. And so delta T is, say, this distance here. And it can be positive or negative in this case. And this alpha, recall, is the temperature coefficient. as uh, so the temperature coefficient. It's defined for a certain, at a certain temperature, it's just the derivative um, of the function as a function of temperature. And you might say, well, this didn't help. Like, we, we wanted it to be independent of temperature, and we, we, we have this linear dependence on temperature within a certain region. Like, okay, if you, if you buy that. But we know that we have a bunch of different circuits at our disposal, and so we might have some circuit that, whose temperature dependence looks like this, but we might have some other circuit uh, whose temperature dependence looks something like this. And so in this same, at this, in the same region, so at 300 degrees Kelvin, or 300 Kelvin, um, the slope, the temperature coefficient, alpha, um, is the opposite. So V is equal to some, some new V naught, so say V naught 2, is approximately equal to V naught 2. Uh, in this case, my, let's just say minus alpha, because let's say alpha is positive minus alpha delta t. And let's say this is v out 1 and this is v out 2. So if we could somehow add these voltages together, then we'd get a total v naught of v naught, let's say v naught 1, we'd get a total v of v naught 1 plus v naught 2 plus alpha delta t minus alpha delta t. And so the temperature dependence, at least in this region, will cancel out and we'll have some v naught 1 plus v naught 2. And so at least within this region, 
this say guaranteed region of say 250 to 350 Kelvin, we've got something that's approximately independent of temperature. And you might say, well, Jordan, the slopes in general aren't going to be, of two arbitrary functions aren't going to be equal. Like you might have something that looks uh, more like this with a much flatter slope. And so you won't get the alphas to cancel out exactly. Um, so it'll have a different slope. Maybe it's uh, alpha over two where alpha was the slope of this guy. Uh, but that's okay because we could just, if we could figure out a way to multiply this, uh, say by two, so if we multiply this whole thing by two, then we'll still get a cancellation of the temperature coefficients. So it's just going to be V naught one plus two V naught two plus alpha delta T minus alpha over two delta T times two. So these will still cancel out and we'll be left with something slightly different because it's V naught one plus two V naught two, but we still got the temperature to cancel out and that's what we want. And just to be clear, we're assuming this is some range, say 250 Kelvin to 350 Kelvin, or approximating these functions as their derivatives. So you might say, well, that's all fine and good. If you are willing to make all those approximations, then uh, maybe you can do this. But how do we actually make these references? How do we make these? Well, first we need to find a couple circuits. Uh, one, some black box circuit who has a voltage uh, whose dependence on temperature has a positive slope in some region uh, about, a, about a certain temperature. And we need another circuit whose, voltage, whose temperature dependence on voltage has a negative slope. And then once we have those two circuits, and let's say that the voltage is, let's say we just treat these circuits like voltage sources now, with some v, some v as a positive function of temperature and some v as a negative function of temperature. Then to add these together, we literally just, uh, it's, it, it, it's amazingly unsophisticated. We literally just put these two voltage sources on top of each other. Um, it's, it's how you add voltages. And then you've got some output voltage, which is not a function of temperature. If you, if you multiply these by the correct by the correct amount. So if you're able to get this guy's alpha and this guy's alpha to exactly cancel each other out. And let's let's call this V1, let's call this V2, V1, V2. So we need to do two things. We need to find these circuits and then we need to figure out how to add them together. And so that's going to be the subject of the next couple videos. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. Uh, if you like the video, please don't forget to like or subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.